Welcome please to the JVG podcast Where these G's are gonna spread their seeds of knowledge About the league, it's flourishing with ease These funny catches seem to be well read, esteemed and honest Like the man himself, Jeff Van Gundy They are high IQ, so cerebral and funny So if you're on the bus, just border on the dunny Listen to the JVG NBA Tribute Show Hello and welcome to episode 118 of the Jeff Van Gundy Tribute Show. I am one of your co-hosts, Lucas, joined as always by my co-host, Marco. Hello, Lucas. Marco, I've, <clears throat> I went back to listen to a few episodes to try and find that clip of Johnny talking about the pocketless shorts. <laughs> and I stumble every fucking intro and that's the first time I have it. Yeah, you nailed that one, man. Yeah. But it's not episode 118. Uh, yeah, it's episode 119. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me! Are you serious? <laughs> I'm, I'm not capping. I'm not You're... having right now. Wow, that's... Wait a second. That's incredible. So, <laughs> so I did mess it up. I think that might be the best day of my life. I... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pop the champagne. It is 119. Wow. Okay. Well, episode 120, though, I'm coming correct. And see, you know, not to fucking rag on you... <laughs> But usually when you stumble, it adds a bit of character, you know? It's like, oh, it's Lucas. He's, yeah, he's yeah. always stumbling over the intro. Yeah. Uh, this one, you actually provided disinformation to our listeners. Yeah. They would have been like, now, hold on. I clicked on 119 and I got 118. What the fuck's the deal with that? Yeah. And you know what they probably said after that? I hope they spend the next minute or two explaining this. <laughs> and, and there we are. One minute 20. Exactly right. <laughs> and stewing on it. Um, so how are you, mate? I'm good, man. How, why are you asking for? Fucking... I've had a bit of a, I've had a bit of a cunt fuck of a day, let's call it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, would you like to go through that? Now, because I'm, I'm fine. I was, I was thinking, of, I was thinking about getting into the details, but like, as I was rehearsing it in my head, I was like, it won't be, it, it will be really boring. Yeah. But just imagine like, so everyone's job, right? Everyone's job has a few bad things. It's mm. just like, all right, that's just a shit part of my work. Yep. I got to deal with it. I think like four of the like top five bad things that can happen in my workplace all happened today. No. <laughs> yeah. Just like particular customers, particular fucking freight companies. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, name. and it was like, it was like I got there at 9.30. I opened the email. Bam. The first one was there. Oh, an hour later, the second one was there. Another hour later, the third one was there. Like okay. it, it, it just, it just hit me right in the face and I never really recovered from it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm having a good day. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's hard to shake that. It's mm. hard to shake a bad start to a day. Yeah. So much, so much hangs on how you wake up. Yeah, definitely. This morning I woke up rested for the maybe the first time ever. Yeah. Last day I woke up at six <laughs> thirty. For the first yes. time ever. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of it was a bit of a lie. And by coincidence, you don't muck up the intro for the first time ever as well. But I did. Yeah, go on though. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday I woke up at 6.30 and I reckon I I reckon I gamed it. I was like, I'm I am i am awake now. Mm. I have to be awake. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fucking I'm gonna just I'm just gonna accept that I'm gonna be a little bit hazy for the first part of my day. Yeah. And you know what I did? I had two coffees before nine a.m. <laughs> and that helped. That helped everything. Yeah, how did that go for you? Really well. Usually it doesn't go too well, but I think if I wake up so exhausted I can get away with two coffees before midday. Mm. <clears throat> um I went out for uh, breakfast with a friend of the pod, uh, Bridget Stafford, the other morning. Um, and she ordered a strong latte and they brought it out and they're like, oh, you're triple shot latte. And she was like, oh, whoa, 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 what are you doing? And they're like, oh, yeah, like our normal coffee is a double shot and our, uh, our strong is a triple shot. Mm. Now, is that illegal? Like By then? Do you, I mean, what do you think about this? Do you think you have to tell people if your default setting is double shot? Well, I thought the default setting was double shot. Wow. Because I've just been making double shots for the better Bro, part of my life. Same. At home, I only make double shots. So you're telling me Norm is single shot? Well, I'm just... A... Do you get any... What? Why do you have it? <laughs> but I think the thing is... <laughs> when you have a coffee... <laughs> when you have a coffee of any description, whether it be a short black, a macchiato, a long black, a cappuccino, a cappuccosa... Yeah. Flat white, a little a magic or something like that. Not, not the Orlando, the other one. Uh, <laughs> then you're getting the same amount of coffee um, because short because mm. long blacks here we go uh, I think they are double shots no they're double ristrettos 
with a bit of hot water on top. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so it's these two shots. Well, yes, but that's kind of not proving my point right. I yeah, think, I don't know. So, so wait. I think if you go to barista school, mm-hmm. and I ain't talking about the law, <laughs> then the default setting is one shot. Right, okay. Yeah. But I think it might be very common practice to have two shots of coffee. Is that maybe why I feel like I can have two coffees if I get them from cafes? Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, this explains a tiny little part of my life. <laughs> but it does explain it. Because, okay, when, fuck, we're, we're talking about coffee. That's fine. Everyone likes coffee. Yeah. Uh, when you make a coffee at home, do you get the milk ratio right every time? Never got it right once. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Ne- never once. I think I've started having iced oat lattes mm. in glasses. Yeah. And that's really easy because you pour the double shot and then I get as much or I have as many ices as I'm going to have in it. Mm. And I put them all in at once so they don't melt. Mm. And I quickly put a bit of milk on yeah. so it stays cool. But yeah, you're, pu- you're pouring the cool milk in, aren't you? Yeah. But then I can see the color of the coffee. Yeah. So yeah, I just yeah, watch yeah, it through yeah. the side and I can just stop whenever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I think I've been over frothing the milk for... I used to be really good at it, but I reckon for about... Six months now, I've been bad at it. Oh, really? Month. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I think when you make a coffee at home, it's always like, I don't know, like, yeah, it might be a magic or it might be a freaking, <laughs> yeah. it, might, yeah. it might be a freaking cappuccino. Yeah. Uh, whereas you go to a cafe, it's like, it's this much milk and it's this much coffee. Yeah. I went to, I remember when I was uh, fresh out of high school, 17 years of age, um, and I couldn't get a part-time job because I'm a bum. Uh, and my dad was like, here, I'll buy a barista school fucking lesson or whatever. And then you get a job at a cafe. And I went and it was like, oh no, no, you need like actual coffee experience. Yeah. To go here. yeah. Like it was all like 35 year old dudes who make coffee at home or like work at cafes who like wanted to elevate their game. Oh my God. So, so you did the advanced course first. Yeah. So I got fucked. Right. Uh, but it was good in like now, many, many years later that I've now actually taught myself how to make coffee because I didn't learn how to make coffee. Then. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't leave being like, cool, I know how to use an espresso machine. Many, many years later, I've taught myself how to pull a shot and bloody froth the milk. You know, I think about all the scientific ways that they did everything back then. Don't ever apply it. <laughs> Don't ever apply it to my coffee making, but it's good to know. Sometimes, do you ever go to a cafe and you're like, I actually could have made something yes, better. Yes, hundred percent. That 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 sucks. Yeah, <laughs> Land Coffee just across the road mm. from where we're sitting right now, dude. Honestly, I'm gonna miss this corner. And yeah, my, and anyone that's like, oh, hey, Lucas, shout out, man. What are you saying? Why are you gonna miss this corner? I'm gonna. I'm me and Bo are moving out. It is honestly a monumentous day in both of our lives. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, well, you'll be fine. But in about <laughs> two and a half weeks, we're we're moving out. However, the corner I live on right now, we got. Oh my god. You're forgetting what you have. I I didn't even fucking think of crossing the set, <laughs> which is which is blasphemy. You which thought is, of land coffee. I first. thought of land coffee, then crossed to Doro. I don't fucking know how to say it. And then I thought of Croxton Rooster. Fuck! It really is the golden triangle. Well, we've got fucking I don't know. You just fucking take whatever's in your pocket and mm. just get a full meal from Croxton Rooster. Cross to Doro, pretty good quality bar and me. A little bit annoying on the price these days. Land coffee, straight up, some of the best coffee I've ever had mm, in my life. Mm, mm. Um, and I'm sure there's other other fucking food works. They, yeah. You got a Mount Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. Land coffee always used to get um, smashed avo delivery during lockdown because mm. it was like the only smashed avo that wasn't thirty dollars. Yeah, it was sixteen. Really? <laughs> yeah. Delivery? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty um, good. Well, yeah. Now nah, that's sad, man. Like, <clears throat> like, where are we gonna film this thing? In your freaking no, it, it can't be at my place. True. I need to get it away from there as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, get used to my living room, folks. I am. Which isn't in this picture. Uh, so why are we here today? Well, we're Was here it to-, to waffle on about coffee and lattes? Maybe. May it, have. It, it has been it so might, far. It might have been. Uh, well, we're here to talk about basketball, actually. The NBA more specifically. <laughs> yeah, which we often do. Yeah. Occasionally, we talk about other things. Yeah. But such as? Usually the NBA. Hobbies. NBA, WNBA, WNBL, pretty much what you can expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps international competitions. Perhaps, yeah, mayhaps. Well, that's another 30 seconds wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the meat and bones of this one. <laughs> All right, so, uh, we're, we've got a couple ideas today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, in, the, in the dying moments of uh, the New Orleans Pelicans-Houston Rockets game the other night, 
uh, uh, my my boy, your boy, all of our boys, Jose Alvarado, he he kind of he got himself in a bit of a scrape, you might say. Well, first of all, for a bit of context, he won us the fucking game. Right. <laughs> he uh, just had so many clutch moments. Strip strip Kevin Porter Jr who we'll get to mm-hmm. uh, earlier in the fourth quarter, like right from the inbound and got a fucking layup. Uh, was hit, it the sneak steal? Uh, it wasn't even like, it wasn't the, you know, it wasn't the Metal Gear Solid, like fucking <laughs> trailing behind him. He was just standing there and he went, bam, slapped yeah, it right. out of his hands and laid it up. Nice. Uh, hit a three that put us up five. Uh, and then down the other end, fucking, uh, you know, Kevin Porter Jr. trying to get past him. He fell over. He took like a hundred steps and like, well, we have to call that a travel. Yeah. Um, got, us, got us possession. And then right at the end when we were already like nine points up uh, at, with about 16 seconds left on the clock, he, he, did, his, he did his classic back, yeah. backcourt steal on Kevin Porter Jr. And then when, went to dribble out the clock. Kevin Porter Jr. obviously a bit angry, went and tried to get the ball off of him, fouled him. They fronted each other up and they both got teched. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr., you know, bye-bye. Uh, Jose Alvarado, standing over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also the play before that, I feel like Brendan Ingram was like happy oh, to dribble yeah. the ball out. Jabari Smith Jr. presses up on him. So mm. he just like half spins him, takes it to the ring, dunks. And then the and play like, just explains. Again, dunks on Kevin Porter Jr. Yeah. So he's kind of he's kind of getting it this quarter. Yeah. And then, yeah, what you just <laughs> laid out. Um, I... I really liked it. I really liked it as a viewer. I think that now the Rockets are going to like, you know, it's like, oh, you know, look at the calendar, you've got games you're going to circle. Mm. I think it's quite telling that the team that the Rockets have circled is the Pelicans. No offense. <laughs> I think you're a good ball club. I don't, know. I don't think you're a circle of yeah, ball absolutely club. absolutely not. <laughs> um, but I feel like we're going to have a full-on cringe fest the next time a Rockets-Pelicans game happens from the Rockets mm. side. Yeah. Um, so what's your, what's your read on this? Well, I I obviously really like it as a <laughs> Pelicans fan. Like uh, seeing having having Jose Alvarado is just like obviously the biggest boon for us. He's so cheap mm. on probably two thirds. Yeah, two thirds of the time he's like a legit backup point guard. You yeah, know? like you put him on the floor, he runs the offense. He's an excellent defender, um, and. Seeing him do something like that when, you know, it's at the end of a game and you're winning, it just, it makes you smile. <laughs> but the rea- the reaction to it has not been like that at mm. all. I think the reaction has been like, but, you know, this guy's really losing his good graces with the league. Like, mm. it's fucking annoying. Like, oh, he could have, he could have injured someone. Like, that's the unspoken rule that you don't, you know, that you just let him dribble it out for the last play or whatever. And it's a bit like, calm down, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh... You're kind of you're happy for NBA players to get in each other's heads for the other forty seven minutes yeah. and uh, forty four seconds of the game, uh, but then I yeah like something something so innocuous as this it doesn't change the course of the game. He's not going to fucking injure <laughs> anyone or, yeah. or anything. It, it, he is doing it to rile rile them up. Like yeah. you 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 can just leave it and it won't change the result of the game. I don't think he has uh, steals clause in his, <laughs> his six over four um contract unbelievable. Like, I, I don't think there's any more money in there which is unbelievable so i just think kind of calm down about it yeah also just a side note jose next time you're uh discussing a contract deal if a team is willing to give you four years you can get more money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can get more money than what you've got um no, he's dedicated to the ball club man i think that's a bad read the injury one yeah uh I think this reminds me a little bit of the when Jamal Murray went for 50. I think he was on 48. I can't mm. remember if he made or missed the basket against the Celtics a few years ago. And then there was a bit of a kerfuffle and a bit of, you know, fucking jostling and whatever. Uh, what's that word? Posturing. There was yeah. a bit of posturing up. Um, and then I can't remember who made this point, but after the game, it was like, hey, if you don't want him to get 50, don't let him get 48. Yeah, yeah. Same deal. It's just like you lost the game. The, the the winning team doesn't owe you anything. They don't yeah. have to. They don't have, like. They're not. It's not like the most disgusting, ungracious thing of all time. It's just like, I don't know. It's it's like a good version of cockiness that I think is good for the sport. Yeah, it's not like it's not like you went for an open layup down the other end and Larry Nance fucking smacked you in the back of the mm. head. You know, like. And on that point, I mean, it's the thing that everyone always says with GTA whenever he does this. Uh, 
learn. <laughs> like, like everyone's like, well, he's not going to be able to do that the next time he plays him. And it's like, yeah, that's probably true. And I think it probably speaks a lot to fucking not how far along Kevin Porter Jr. is as a player that yeah. it actually happened to him twice in the game. And obviously, like, you don't have your guard up at that point in the ball game, but like, you're also you're not you're not urgently trying to get the ball up or anything like that. Yeah, uh, you're you probably you're probably you're probably like holding it, dribbling it pretty lackadaisically, being like one two. Three, four. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, like if you don't want it to happen, don't let it happen. Yeah. Uh, you're, so you're saying uh, GTA got two of these on Kevin Porter? Yeah. One the of them. Game. One of them wasn't the classic. The classic where he trails, where he goes and hides in the corner. Yeah. It was like, you know, where they just in, they just throw the inbound in quickly and lazily, and he was just standing there and slapped it out of his hands and got yeah. a layup. Yeah. How long has he been doing this? I've just searched. I, I just searched Jose, Al, Jose Alvarado first steal in the hopes of like <laughs> someone had written an article knowing what I'm talking about. But I can I see this. Um, I think it was in December, or January last year. Yeah. yeah. So it's been nearly a year now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's still happening, which yeah. shows quite a few things. First of all, people just obviously like NBA teams and players aren't reading the scout on this guy. <clears throat> Otherwise, his play would not be fucking occurring. But I mean... Wait, no, you finish, sorry. Um, and then also, I think, you know, uh, as an evolution of that, um, and this game more specifically, Kevin Porter Jr. and his running mate, Jalen Green, not fit to run an NBA <laughs> yeah, offense. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait, before we, before we get to that, like... You don't have to read the scouting report on Jose Alvarado to see this because every time he does it, it's just all over Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the most social, social media ball basketball play that isn't a dunk, basically. Yeah. Is, is, a, is a hilarious backcourt steal on a 34-year-old point guard. Mm. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think, it, I think it just proves that certain players in the league, and definitely Kevin Porter Jr., aren't... Well, they're just, they're just not thinking about who they're playing against. They're just... Yeah. They're just don't have that brain where they're like, oh, this is the opposition I'm going up against. This is how I have to change how I play. This is how I have to act. And man, yeah, I think you're right. I think that shows in his inability to be the point guard really for the Houston Rockets. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I feel as though we may have talked about this on on the pod, the, the, the how bad the Houston offense is. Um, uh, you know, for a young team, you expect them to make mistakes. You know, defensively, they're probably not going to be too good, understandably. And offensively, they might show flashes, but I just don't think this Houston team's showing flashes. No. Like, and I think that Steven Silas isn't a good NBA coach. I think it's kind of hard to tell given his situation. But I don't think it's his fault when Jalen Green dribbles the ball down the court, half drives, and then pulls it back out, and there's 11 seconds on the shot clock, mm. and no one else has touched the ball, and he's on the wing shoulder area where it like when it goes from a straight line to, yeah. to an arc. Like, that's such a non-threatening position. And then they have to get into an action. And then, like, they just force themselves into these late clock situations. It's It should be an ecosystem for development. But two guys are just putting up shots. I don't yeah. even think Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. are getting better. No. <laughs> um, and to their, to their credit, or to our discredit, like, they took us to a really close game. Yeah. They're leading for a good portion of it. But... What what was happening down the stretch is like we were running these plays, and I actually I actually think their defense is like better than their offense. Yeah, de oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, purely, uh, it might just purely be through personnel. You know, like Jabari Smith Jr. Yeah, he struggled uh, early in the league, but like his defense is good. Uh, Shangun's a good defensive center. Uh, you know, he's not he's not swatting every shot away, but he's solid. Um, but so yeah, we'd be we'd be like running running these plays, doing all this action, doing all this movement. Maybe we'd get a bucket, maybe we wouldn't. And then down the other end, like Jalen Green or Ken Porter Jr. would just bully their way to the basket, or do what you said. Like you know, if they don't if they don't get the open open run to the rim, then they're kind of they've kind of fucked themselves. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like what? Speaking of Jabari, Jabari Smith Jr., what is going on with him? <laughs> he can't he can't just be standing there on yeah. every single play. He's not getting a look in on yeah. the offense at like at all. Yeah, and I think I think that rookies' numbers are never going to be good. I think you were talking about his what number does it start with? <laughs> but um, yeah, as you have as you have brought to our attention, thirty one percent from the field, twenty eight percent from three, eighty four percent from the free throw lines. Really, good. yeah, definitely. I think rookies probably 
I'm like just guessing would be that field goal would be around 40%, maybe a bit lower. Three point would be around 30%, maybe up to 33% for like your mm. average rookie. Um, and I just think this like this margin below that median I just made up is due to the fact that he isn't getting any help. Yeah. And you can put that on the player, but like fucking watch a Rockets game, man. Yeah. Just involve him in the play as well, because yeah. like to, to be fair, out of those three, the three the three bigs that got were in the top three in the draft this year, you know, Paolo, Chet, uh, Jabari, he was like the least, you know, can handle the ball, can run the offense yeah. out of the three. He still needs to be like the second best player on the team, you know. Like, mm. uh, I think I think he's kind of deserving to to be getting, you know, for them to be creating opportunities for him and stuff. And but it's not. It's not like you need to give him the ball and let him initiate the offense. It's like yeah. Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. need to involve him in the offense. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, as obviously... What am I trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you if you look at other rookies, like Paolo Bencaro, okay, you know, Jabari Smith Jr. almost got drafted number one over mm. him. Uh, there was a brief moment there. I don't think there's any doubt that he's the better player. But look at what... Look at what is happening to him in Orlando. Yeah. Like, he's getting so... He is benefiting so much from how they're playing, from, like, how the coach trusts him. Mm. Like, there are dozens of point guards on that team, and him and Franz Wagner are, like, handling the ball. They're, mm. they're getting the most touches out of everyone on the floor, basically. And, yeah, he's averaging 23 points, 46 from the field. Okay, 25% from three, but, you know, like... Mm. Uh, I don't, he's, he's not, he's not sitting in the corner, you know, waiting for the ball to come to him. Like he's taking shots off the dribble, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, yeah, I think that's in itself is enough evidence of like the difference in it, how, how the difference in coaching a rookie can be for like their production and their development. And I think on that development and Paolo and Franz Wagner getting so much so many reps mm. of running the offense. It's also teaching like Cole Anthony and like uh, the rest of their guards escape me right now, but mm. how to play off the ball. Yeah. And that's part of development as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that, that, that they, they're, they're learning all these, all the different ways to approach an offense and the magic's offense looks good. Mm. Um, yeah. I, <clears throat> fuck. I, 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 I I'm, I was trying to think of what it would look like if Jabari was in Orlando and mm. Paolo is in Houston. Because I get the feeling their numbers would kind of be even. Yeah. Like, the, Jabari wouldn't have an advantage. I think mm. their numbers would probably be a bit more even. Um, but, yeah, I think you just need to involve Jabari Smith in the offense. Like, if there's a switch, if Kevin Porter Jr. or Jalen Green get a switch with Jabari's man, not every time that has to be they pull it out to the top of the three-point line and yeah. then ISO. Yeah. <clears throat> Jabari needs to get some like yeah. elbow. He's, he's six foot eleven. He's very strong. Yeah, <laughs> he needs to get some like elbow post slash isolation plays because I feel like he that was kind of his bread and butter in college. Mm-hmm. And if he has a six foot four guy on him, then <clears throat> how are they possibly going to contest his yeah. shot? Yeah, yeah. And that should be four times a game. Yeah, and then talk about this all the time. Like you're not you're not just running that to get Jabari a bucket. You're running yeah. that because that opens up the entire offense, and then you have oh two good shooters who might who might be open yeah uh you know if he draws the double or yeah like if he has if he has the advantage on his defender fucking he should not be averaging 10 points a game that is no. that is just criminal i think the criminality is fucking 10 field goals again yeah like that should be like 15 <laughs> yeah yeah especially what, drafting him third yeah you want to know a fun fact about jabari smith jr i would love to he's uh cousins with kwame brown Really? Yeah. Oh I just God. learned that today. No way. Yeah. Through which which, which side? Um, probably the mothers. Did you buy? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Does that mean a Smith married a Brown? Those, those are just the most generic. <laughs> <Yeah. names. laughs> Brown Smith. <laughs> uh, you want to know a fun Palo Bunkero fact? Oh, I would love to. Do you, do you know what his middle names are? Ooh, no. A Napoleon James. Wow, <laughs> that's a pretty good name. That's a fucking. That's a that's a full barreled name. <laughs> every 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 bit is shooting. Even the James is kind of doing a little bit of work there, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> Another fun fact about Kwame Brown: <laughs> he was drafted before Jabari Smith Jr. was born. Wow! And they're cousins. Yeah, that is. All right, I'm gonna have to look at the family tree later. <laughs> <I think. laughs> uh, well, what next then, man? Well, speaking of uh, 
guys in the league. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the Fe- the Phoenix Suns, after sitting him, separating him from the team in the offseason, have decided to actively look for uh, buyers for Jay Crowder, if you will. Um, I mean, there were, yeah, there was a bit of sort of movement in the offseason but now that Cam Johnson is going to be out for... It's not the whole season, is it? It's, but it's going to be like no, four months or something it's, like that. Yeah. Oh, I haven't looked into it, yeah. but I know it's not the whole season. Yeah, it's just like it's a partial reconstruction, whatever the fuck. Um, yeah, so now they are actively looking for teams to go after Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder, like, you know, yeah, he's aging, still has a super valuable skill set in this league. There's a lot of contending teams or teams that wish they were contending that are kind of flagging at the moment. There's actually heaps of them. <laughs> um, so he might be a pretty hot property. Lucas, you have some you have some little uh some little draft trades for us there. I do have some little draft trades for uh Jay Crowder. And as we were talking about the Rockets, I actually just started drawing up another one right now. Mm-hmm. Trying to I'll go I'll come back to that later, maybe if we have a break or something. <laughs> But I've got five that I like in various magnitudes. Mm-hmm. I think I might start from the ones I like the least. Yep. Um, but I think I looked at it from which teams should, which teams need a Drake, Jay Crowder. You know, a lot of teams, nearly, probably nearly every team would like need it, that sort of player. And then I was like, okay, but which teams should actually go for it? Yeah. And so I've got the Cleveland Cavaliers mm-hmm. trading away Chetty Osman and Lamar Stevens yep. for Jay Crowder. Mm-hmm. Now, my thinking here is, I don't really know. I think Chetty Osman has been getting starts. He's definitely been getting rotational minutes. I know Lamar Stevens is a pretty good player. He brings a lot of energy. And they are a lot younger than Jay Crowder is. And I feel like Jay Crowder just provides a more steady role and could be just like the full-time starting three in Mm, Cleveland mm. next to... You you all know the rest of the fucking starting five. (laughs) But like could be that perfect balance or, you know, close to a perfect balance... um, in the in the starting lineup for the Cavs, yeah, I, I I like I like the fit of Jay on the on the Cavs. I I really like the idea of him going somewhere and like only playing the three, or you know, only moving up to the to the four when they go a bit smaller, mm-hmm. uh, because like he has been a power forward for the last you know few seasons of his career. Um, but that would be so fun defensively. Given then he can sort of he can sort of cover for like you know the bad defenders in their backcourt mm. in Donovan Mitchell and uh, Darius Garland, but then Evan Mobley is good enough that like if he gets switched onto the wing, then like you know he's going to be fine. Jay Jay is still big enough that if he gets switched onto the four, he's going to be fine as well. Yeah, I just don't I don't know how much of an upgrade it would be for the Cavs to. From him to Chetty Osmond, though. Yeah. Because I, I don't think Chetty Osmond is, like, a great defender like Jay Crowder is. Mm. Or, you know, that has that sort of, like, defensive upside. But I think he's solid. Like, and certainly on a team that's so good defensively because of how they use their bigs. Like, yeah, what is, what's the value of having, like, a really, really, really good guy at the three? Versus, yeah. Versus him. Yeah. I also really struggle to find what the value of Jay Crowder is. Because, yeah. like, I don't know what's a good and a bad trade. Yeah. But I'll keep running through them. Um, well, I guess on, on that one, also on the Suns side, I do like that for the Suns. I feel like Chetty Osman is kind of like a poor man's Cameron Johnson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he even sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> the Turkish Cam Johnson. Mm. And then I feel like Lamar Stevens can fill mm. somewhat of a role, maybe an energizer role. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, I feel like kind of unknown entities that also the Cavs aren't fully bought in on either Osman or Stevens. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then also if you're the Cavs, you're already, I think you already want to be thinking about the playoffs and you want to be like, yeah. okay, a guy who's been to the NBA finals twice has like, I want to say like 60 playoff games under his belt or something like that. Mm. Now I lied. Uh, Chetty Osman doesn't have a start. Oh, I go. Well, actually, first of all, shout out, he's fucking massive. But <laughs> I swear to God, he started when we played them. When we played them, but yeah. I must, I must, I actually must be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's playing a lot of minutes though, because I think, I think that that three spot is just so empty. You yeah, know? like, yeah, like Levert has been good, but is that really where you want Levert? Mm. Uh, then yeah, your next option is freaking what's his face, oh, Dean yeah. Wade. No, well, I was gonna say the other guy. 
Isaac, Isaac Cora. Cora. Yeah. 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 See. <laughs> so you have an I. So you have a J crowd size hole of the three. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is true. So next team I went to that. was the Philly Sixers, mm-hmm. and I know they have PJ Tucker. I know they have Daniel House. I just feel like they could use some depth with those type players. I'm imagine having all three. Exactly. Exactly <laughs> my thinking. So they they are uh, trade. So they're getting just Jay Crowder again. Mm. They're trading away Furkan Korkmaz, Matisse Thybulle. And I was looking at this, I was pondering, I was thinking, and I was like, that, I don't know if that's a good trade or if that's not enough. So I also chucked a second round pick in there because mm-hmm. I, know, I know some listeners at home would uh, like that sort of shit. <laughs> but I feel like you get just the shooting in Furkan Korkmaz and then you get just the defending in Matisse Thibault. Um, whereas Jay Crowder has, it's probably like 0.8 of both of those guys mm. in both of those yeah, sets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which... That's probably what Phoenix want, you know? Like, they want to <laughs> they want to be able to throw out a guy who can just take shots, and they want to be able to throw out a guy who can just defend, especially if it's kind of just papering up. I mean, this is the interesting thing for Phoenix is, like, while Cam Johnson was he- uh, healthy, they were still, like, the second-best team in the West. Yeah. So they don't really... If, if you can get double sort of options for Jay Crowder, that's, like, a really good deal. If yeah, you, if you see what I mean, like if you can get someone who can throw him when you just want to shoot, if you can get someone if you, you can throw him when you just want a defender, um, yeah, kind of. I would kind of love the idea of Philly. Almost, I mean, it's it's a little bit Houston Rockets, like just getting heaps and heaps and mm. heaps of three and D wings and just chucking them out there. Yeah. Oh my god, and they got hard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then like a fucking man, God, it would be so good. First, first round, first round of the playoffs, game two, Philly have lost, game one at home. And then uh, they sit and beat in the fourth, play PJ at the five. Oh, and yeah. You go like Harden, Maxi, <laughs> House, Crowder, Tucker. <laughs> then Tony will be the coach by then. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, you will be. Um, next one I've got is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh, dear. Ooh, oh, now, my. we've talked about them. <laughs> and even Should they them. really get involved in another trade? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me tell you it, and then uh, you can you can be the judge of that. <laughs> so, the Suns get... Oh, wait. I we should have been doing this. Maybe I should do the Suns first. Mm. So, the Suns get Kyle Anderson and Jordan McLaughlin. Now, Kyle Anderson cannot be traded until December 15, which is a month from now. That's okay. We can wait. We can wait. The Timberwolves get... Jay Crowder and a lottery protected first round pick from this year. Now, mm. let me just defend myself before we go any further. Jordan McLaughlin is a very good backup yeah. point guard. Cameron Payne is no longer a very good backup point guard. <laughs> Kyle Anderson, I don't fully like him on a lot of teams. I think the Suns would be one of the teams that I would like him on. Mm. This lotto protected first is from this year. Is probably going to be in the 20s anyway. Yeah. I just think that the Wolves needed to give up a bit more. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, the Bulls well, need to get a bit more. Yeah. Oh, yes. definitely. No, yeah, you're trading... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're trading Carl Anderson, who you kind of got to be, like, you know, a rotation wing. Yeah. Which, I don't know, fucking... Oh, God. Like, what is Carl Anderson, man? Yeah. Like, like, you're so right. He's so valuable in certain situations mm. and then just completely useless in others. Um... And yeah, and you're giving up Jordan McLaughlin, who you're right, but who kind of might be surplus to requirements at the moment with like, you know, uh, Noel and... Mm. I mean, you could really... You'd love to have another point guard, though. But yeah, but I, yeah, yeah, exactly right. You're, you are, you're giving up someone who is actually valuable. Yeah, I think that would be great for Phoenix. Yeah. Um, what, what? How? Yeah. I'm trying to picture Kyle Anderson in Phoenix. Explain it to me. Um, I'm, I'm just imagining like bit of Shemet, bit of, bit of Cam Johnson, mm. bit of Mikel Bridges mm. with the length and then just obviously slowed down. Yeah. Um, and then also you just won't make a mistake Yeah. and can be the fifth best guy on the court, can also be the third best guy on the court. Yeah. And that's as good as Carl Anderson needs to be on a team that'll have, um, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton in the same clothes. Yeah, no, I like that. I like I like the fit. I mean, I I think will Phoenix give up a protected first round pick for Carl Anderson and Jordan McLaughlin? It sounds a bit silly. Yeah, it does. But but I'm banking on this. What being, what else are they going to do with that? Yeah, I'm banking on this being what a pick twenty four and above. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, the only thing is if they're like 
if they if they still think there's a Kevin Durant trade or something on the yeah. horizon and they want to hold out for that. Yeah. Well, I guess I was gonna like what two two seconds, mm. but then that feels like not enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like your lo- your logic works here. Yeah. Like I think that's that's the worth for worth trade. If you can do a top twenty five protection, you can't on the trade machine. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can do that in real life, then yeah, do that. That would be what it was. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Next one. Oh boy, Timberwolves could use Jay Crowder. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Rice. Next one is the Suns getting Joe Ingles and Jordan Awara from the Milwaukee Ooh. Bucks. Now, Joe Ingles cannot be traded until December 15. <laughs> Jordan Awara can't be traded until Jan 15. Wow. So that's quite a while away. Yeah. That, that is, you're on the way to, you're, you're about a month away from the All-Star break and you kind of want your team to be set <laughs> by that point yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, gelling. Yeah. And then the Bucks get just Jay Crowder in, in return. Um, don't, don't you just want Joe Ingles more if he's good, if he's healthy? As the Bucks, yeah, interesting. But he's not healthy. Yeah, he's that like, oh, is he's way, is he making his way back into form? Yeah, yeah. And I think this is the thing: is people are very, very confident that Joe Ingles is going to be really good when he comes back. Mm. When he kind of wasn't, he was kind of already becoming not that good mm. at the end of his um, <laughs> at the end of his stint with Utah. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, like if you take him purely as players, I think I think Joe Ingles has more upside because like mm. he can defend most of the players that Jay Crowder can defend. He can hit threes, but then also he can fucking run your offense yeah. for, for ten minutes a night, which Phoenix would love. That would be such a good fit for Phoenix. Like yeah. instead of instead of when you bring in Cam Payne on and having him sprint at the rim, mm. like you bring Joe Joe Ingles on, you're like you know you sit. You see Chris Paul, you bring Joe Ingles on, Devin Booker's moving around off ball, but he's doing a little bit of, you know, creation himself. But you have Joe Ingles there to, you know, run the offense for the last four minutes of the first quarter or something. That would be really sexy. Yeah. If, yeah. yeah. So I guess Ingles works for both these teams. I actually like this Jordan Wara fella, mm-hmm. but I was thinking Joe Ingles is 35 at this point. Yeah. As we said, he's kind of unknown. Jordan Awara, I feel like the Bucks actually probably yeah. wouldn't want to get get rid of. And then I think on the Bucks side, Jay Crowder is there. Mm. And man, fucking, you got this wing slash front line that has Giannis, uh, Bobby Portis, Chris Middleton when he comes back, mm. um, Brooke Lopez. Uh, Fuck, you would just have so many options. So much fucking weight. We'd... Like so much physicality yeah, coming yeah, from the front court. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, God, the I think the Bucks, I think the Bucks should win the chip this year. I think they should do that. <laughs> but like, You'd like to recommend if, that? If we're talking, we're talking about that, right? Like they have so many options, so much physicality in their front court, uh, and then in their back court, like you can throw. You got Drew, obviously, but then you can throw out Hill or Wesley Matthews, mm. who are still both good somehow, mm. or you got Grayson Allen, and is Pat Connaughton still there? Yeah, he is. So yeah, you have these two fucking three-point shooting white boys that you can, <laughs> that you can chuck on the floor. Um, uh, God, just that would give them so many options. Like there would there would never be a lineup on the floor that you felt safe around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that depth they keep talking yeah. about. <laughs> All right, next one is... Uh, I, I need, I'm going to need some of your participation in this one. However, um, the Suns get Kendrick Nunn only. Uh-huh. No, that can't be the right. Okay, so <laughs> that's where I've made the mistake. The Suns get Kendrick Nunn and Lonnie Walker, uh-huh. edition four. Yeah. Now, you're not going to guess the next team. Yeah. <laughs> but the next team is the Indiana Pacers. Oh. Who get Russell Westbrook, two picks, and I've also given them a pick swap. These are all from the Lakers. Yeah. And then the Lakers get Jay Crowder, Miles Turner, Buddy Heald. Right. Now, it's a blending of uh, Lakers get Crowder and then also the, that Pacers mm. trade that Miles Turner suggested. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. I feel like... So, okay. So, Indiana get an extra pick swap here. Yeah. So, it's two unprotected and then a pick swap in between. They're, they're not getting anything from Phoenix, are they? Uh, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so, Phoenix... Is, yeah. Okay. I see what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so Kendrick Nunn and Lonnie Walker the fourth are currently like the Lakers, what, fourth and fifth best players? Yeah. Now, 
Are they in the top 10 for Phoenix when they come over? That's that's a, I think that Lonnie Walker could oh fucking Lonnie hell, Walker I, could, I see what you're saying. Lo, Lonnie Walker could play some good minutes for Phoenix. Yeah. But I don't think he I don't think he fills any of their needs. I was gonna say, I can't believe I'm saying this, but they've got Landry Shamet. Yeah. <laughs> and then Kendrick Nunn is just like Ken, Kendrick Nunn would be good because we've seen what like Kendrick Nunn uh early heat Kendrick Nunn, mm. rookie Kendrick Nunn. Yeah. Was, good system, Kendrick. Nunn. Yeah, yeah, and he was so good as like the alternate point guard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, if you, yeah, you got Chris Paul, kind of you know run the offense, blah 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 blah, and then you throw Kendrick Nunn on. I like him sprinting at the rim more than like campaign sprinting at the rim. Yeah, they are similar players though. Funny. Yeah, yeah. Again, a recently signed thing, Lonnie Walker, the edition four can't be traded yeah. until December fifteen. The Lakers say yes. It is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 any any trade that involves the Lakers, the Lakers say yes. To, yeah. Because there's no trade that anyone is saying yes to. Well, the, every trade that the Lakers say yes to, everyone else in the league says no to. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's no trade they lose. Yeah. Like, I don't care who the pieces are going out. There's no change. Like, if you get rid of you get rid of Westbrook, you get rid of Westbrook. You get rid of any of those role players, you know, that's not really mm. lost. Get rid of AD and LeBron. It's like, oh, okay, so we're gonna actually like yeah. go, go go into the rebuild. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's 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 like if you look at it from that perspective, it's kind of a win 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 win. Yeah, like is. Yeah. Now, next up, we got. Uh, okay, so this one also can't happen until the fifteenth of Jan. Yeah, that's all right. But the Suns get Max Struss and mm. Denny Avdia. Oh. <laughs> Actually, not not in not in the arrangement you've done it, but I was thinking okay. of the other deal. The Washington Wizards get Jay Crowder, Tyler Hero, two unprotected picks from the Heat. The Heat get Bradley Beal. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. Wow, you went crazy with it. So this is probably this is very cheap for Bradley Beal. Yeah. I didn't get into like the nitty gritty of the um, picks. I feel like there's also some pick swaps to go our way. Potentially a, a Heat role player to go to the Suns and then a pick from the Suns. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I think this is genius. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like the most the Heat can pay Washington for in one way. If you see what I mean. Because you're getting Tyler. So good young player. Yeah. Really good young player. You're getting a whole bunch of picks, however many yeah. picks. I've got two here, but, you know, willing to cheat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Jay Crowder. Yeah. Who's like an immediate value add. Uh, like, I don't think, I don't think you get, I don't think you get worse as a team from yeah. that trade, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. Uh, consider also considering how well you've been playing without Beal at oh, times this season. Fucking always but seems we'll to be talk about that huh? next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then okay, so the Heat have to give up Hero and Struess. Yeah, but that's fine. You're getting Bradley Beal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then the Suns get Struess and they get a wing sized player. Like, so yeah, I was Denny just had to fucking go yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I but I don't mind like. In the same way that I was like, okay, Lonnie Walker can play minutes for the Suns. Denny Avdia can play minutes. Sorry, in a different way. Mm. Denny Avdia can play minutes for the Suns. Like, he's... If you just need to throw him on for 10 minutes a night to kind of fill the wing size hole mm. while Cam Johnson's away, I think that's fine. Yeah. I don't think he can fuck it up that badly. I also think... <laughs> <laughs> I also think Monty Williams would use him better. Yeah. I feel like there's they're not lacking in good playmaking, but they're lacking in playmaking depth. Yeah, right. Like, you like Chris Paul, I'd be fucking... You like, <laughs> you like Devin Booker as a creator mm. and a playmaker. Campaign, I think, is cool. But then I feel like Monty Williams would get Denny in situations where he can, like, have semi-transition, which is yeah. what his fucking skill set was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, like, part... Um, the Wizards as an organization's fault. A little bit Wes Unsell Jr.'s fault, but he's he's I actually think he's a pretty good coach. Mm. And then yeah, also Denny not being the most uh what's it called? Versatile player. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I like this as a Wizards fan. I think the Bill era just needs to end. And yeah. I know he has a no trade clause, but I think he'd probably drop it to go to the Heat. And do you do you feel you feel like that's a good price? Like No, no. no. I know that I know that we're losing <laughs> yeah, this yeah, deal. Yeah. But 
Jay Crowder would come in and be the first three and D player in the organization's history. <laughs> we've got we've had a lot of people sold as three and D players. Uh, maybe Garrison Matthews for the forty games he yeah. played for us off the bench. Shout um, out. Uh, I think Tyler would be really would be like. I, I think that Tyler is. I think Tyler gets like 70% of the Beal trade done mm. for the Wizards. Mm. I think they're looking at that as like six years younger or whatever it is. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty well, like he's pre- quite proven, you know, enough in mm. the league so far. And then a couple of picks as well. And Bradley Beal is in his prime and we're not a team that is a, near a championship. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And like, obviously, you know, like... Tyler, Kuz, Porzingis. That doesn't feel like the team of the future, you know? Like, there's more to do. But that's, yeah, that's a good start. That's a good move from the era to come out with, like, another all-star player who's seven years younger or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I actually, because I was thinking that pretty much any of your wings that just are kind of struggling for minutes and a place in the team at the moment, uh, well, yeah, namely Denny and Rui, I, I, I was actually thinking on Phoenix, they would look like different players. Like mm. Monty can get something out of them. I think it's that thing when sometimes you jump up like to a better team and there's less expected of you. Yeah. Uh, and also when you go from the team that drafted you, like that's like, oh, we had, we had all our hope. We have a lot of hopes on this player. We draft them in, you know, we draft them high in the first round. Uh, we want to develop them. And then they just don't really pan out into the player that you think they are. Like, I think this... Uh, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think there's still this thing with Rui where it's like, no, nah, we can turn him into like one of our five best players, mm, you know? Kind of. Yeah, like, I know what you mean. Like <coughs> there's, he still he still has that kind of burden on his shoulders or something. Or if you go play for the Phoenix Suns who are like already a good team, they just need a six foot eight guy with long arms uh, <laughs> to be there for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the stop gap. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know... You might not, you might not flourish and develop in the traditional sense, but you'll look like a good basketball player. Yeah. Also, let's talk about the Heat because <laughs> they need to make a move like this. Yeah. I don't trust their depth anymore. Nah. Max Struess is. I think he's a great shooter. I think that there is quite a bit of chucking happening as well, though. Mm. Um, Bro, the fucking the M, the NBA cogniz- media cognoscenti, those blokes. They've been <laughs> they've been jacking Max Struess off. Being like, ah, oh, you know, this would be great for the Suns. Here's a here's a guy. He's six five, but you know, you can defend a bit bigger than he is. He can shoot threes. Ah, oh, and he's a, he's proven that he can be in a playoff. You know, like a starter in a playoff scenario. Bro, he was so bad in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he was he he was like one of the key contributors to them losing that series against Boston. Was he was just not good enough. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like he played badly. He was like, no, this guy just do- actually can't be a starter on a team in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah, the Heat was struggling to find depth in the playoffs last year without Hero. Mm, yeah. So take that rotation. Hero's already not in it. You, all you're doing is replacing Max Struess with Bradley Beal. Mm. And <clears throat> Beal isn't one of those players that you're like, you're doing that like uh, Oladipo, Gabe Vincent mm. rotation with. Like, what do we want for the next five minutes? Mm. Beal's a guy put on for 42 minutes. Yeah. And he's... Sometimes the best player on the team, but usually the second best to Jimmy Butler. Um, and yeah, to think that that's a decision that's made for you. Then, you know, Larry still makes like great plays. I don't like winning plays and stuff, but he's not going to like fill out the stat sheet. But you got Larry, Beal, Butler, and Bam. And then I don't know who you, wherever you want to put as the yeah, other wing. Yeah. But that's a, I think that's Maybe a like good... a Jay Crowder type. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll be cash, he's going to be paying, cashing his paycheck in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think, like, the biggest upside for Hero for the Heat was, like, oh, I, I think, he, like, he was really the only player who could get a bucket apart from Jimmy. And, like, in a playoff game, if you need... I mean, we've just seen it. We've seen it uh, two out of the last three years when, like, the Heat are struggling for a bucket. Uh, they have to, like, they have to kill Jimmy Butler <laughs> to get one, basically. Like, yeah. like, they have to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> so, I think, yeah, introducing Beal would be like, okay, it's not like streaky Tyler Hero, who, yeah, really good, but perhaps isn't the person you turn to in the playoffs when you just need someone to generate 30 points. Mm. You have Beal, who, like, quite literally is that player, right? Yeah. And, like, will look a lot better, um, you know, with the opportunities that he gets from Jimmy and that he gets from Bam. Yeah, I've, I've just made another trade as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have a trade to announce. <laughs> so, I'm going to try it, see what the uh, 
Okay, so everything seems to be making sense. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so the Rockets are going to need to get rid of another big contract. All right, well, let's, let's throw it out there anyway. Um, Eric Gordon, Jay Crowder, Garrison Matthews for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Russell Westbrook, 2029 20, and 2027 20, picks to the Rockets, all from the Ooh. Lakers. And then Suns, Lonnie Walker the fourth, Kendrick Dunn, same from before. But then I've added this second round pick from Chicago, uh, 2023 <laughs> second round pick, that, which is from the Lakers. Right, right. Which is the Lakers owned. Yeah. Right? Lakers own, I should say. Yeah. So, we're, yeah, we're, but we're, I mean, we're sticking with the... Oh, I see. It's just how the salary works, isn't it? Yeah, so the the Rockets need to get rid of a lot more cash. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which, I don't think... I don't, know, I don't know if they have that much, do they? They can get rid of Derek Favors. I don't know why they would They got want, Derek Favors? <laughs> I don't know why they would want to do that, to, like, do... You know, like, doing a favor for everyone... Doing a favor for the fucking Lakers by getting yeah, a Derek Favors yeah, yeah. contract. Um, <clears throat> but then the next... Like big contracts are their rookies, and they're not going to trade them away. Yeah. So this might be a lot harder than yeah. That I think thought. you 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 really want to get Garrison Matthews on the Lakers. I think he <laughs> would be great on the Lakers. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, uh, that was that. Uh, that you was... know what, how we should end? Would you like to accept one of these trades? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them? Do I have to? Pick, I have to pick one. This is you. You get your choice. That that my point was like to. To pitch you the trades yeah. and then you have to pick a trade. I, I'm going to pick the Wizards one. I yeah. think that's so much fun. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I see the upside for every single team and also the way it tilts, it tilts the league on its head a little bit I yeah. think is fun. Yeah. 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 It changes it changes the, the direction of two franchises and then it does what the Suns need which is a stopgap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I feel like Struess is a bit more long term. Yeah. But they yeah. can worry about that when it comes. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you're not like, oh, we got Max Struess, like next five years is ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good chat to you, mate. Yeah. I'll see you 100, uh, episode 120 yeah, next week. Yeah, there we go. See you then.